Hi everyone, um, it's Professor Gulia again. I'm really, really sorry for not being able to come to class on this past Wednesday. I tried to figure things out as much as I could, but the scheduling just wouldn't allow me to. So basically what I've done is I've created a very quick lecture to allow us to stay on the same page. So even though you had a substitute come in and lead you through a couple of things, this is a way for me to just very quickly touch base with you about why I chose this memoir and what I want us to get out of it. So at this point, you should have already read a decent amount of the memoir and you should have already discussed the memoir a little bit with Professor Cowan. I'm sure she did a great job allowing you guys to talk about how the memoir works and how we can use it as a model. But I just want to say a couple of quick things on here so that when we come back to class this coming Monday, we can just hit the ground running. So for that day, um, we will be basically so we'll talk a little bit about chapter one, but we're also going to think about chapter two and how it's different. So first I want to just talk about the first couple of paragraphs of the book. It's possible that you guys already talked about this with Professor Cowan, but I want to use these two paragraphs to talk a little bit about it about what I want us to get out of the memoir. So here are the first two paragraphs and I'm just going to read them out loud so we get a little bit of a feel for them. These are the first couple of paragraphs of Dave Pelzer's A Child Called It. And as you probably already know, the language is very powerful, it's very strong. So I do want to say a very quick trigger warning and especially as we move forward with this book, if you are made uncomfortable with anything, please just let me know. We will figure it out. I will accommodate you any way that I can. With that being said, here are the first couple of paragraphs of Dave Pelzer's A Child Called It. March 5th, 1973, Daly City, California. I'm late. I've got to finish the dishes on time. Otherwise, no breakfast. And since I didn't have dinner last night, I have to make sure I get something to eat. Mother's running around yelling at my brothers. I can hear her stomping down the hallway towards the kitchen. I dip my hands back into the scalding rinse water. It's too late. She catches me with my hands out of the water. Smack! Mother hits me in the face and I topple to the floor. I know better than to stand there and take the hit. I learn the hard way that she takes that as an act of defiance, which means more hits, or worst of all, no food. I regain my posture and dodge her looks as she screams into my ears. That's the beginning of the book. There is no real context here. And the reason that I've been teaching this book over the last couple of years as a model of a memoir um, are for the, or the, or the following reasons. The first reason and you may have talked about this with Professor Cowan already. The first reason is that Dave Pelzer uses so much concrete detail. Now, in this course, I will call this concrete detail. I will also call it sensory detail. These are the exact same thing. A concrete detail or a sensory detail, whenever I use um, either of those phrases means that the writer is encouraging the readers to feel like they are there witnessing the events. 
So in that first paragraph, Dave Pelzer just dies in. He doesn't give us context. He is describing a specific moment on a specific day. And as he moves forward, he focuses on his senses. So he is writing about what he sees, what he smells, what he hears. He hears his mother stomping through the hallway. Um, sometimes what he smells. Uh, or I think I said that one, uh, what he tastes. But anyway, he walks through different senses. And this is going to be one of my greatest recommendations for you when you move to writing your own memoirs. If you are stuck about, or if you're stuck writing about any of the things that you have decided to focus on, try to think about your senses. What did you see? What did you hear? What did you smell? What did you touch? What did you taste? Doing this will help you out because they will give you more details to focus on. The second main reason or the second main skill that Dave Pelzer uses so incredibly well has to do with how he lets readers inside his own mind. This is one of the most important things along with concrete detail that we will be practicing in our own memoirs. As we read the first couple of pages and over you know, the first couple weeks of the course, the first couple of chapters of Dave Pelzer's memoir, we will see that Dave Pelzer is really making himself vulnerable. He is letting his readers inside his mind so that we can get a little bit of a sense of how he thinks and how he feels. Memoirs can be emotional. You have chosen um, in your own memoirs a moment in your life that is important to you for any reason. So by walking the reader through your thoughts and emotions, you can make it really clear why you chose that moment over any other moment in your entire life to write about. All right, so those are the two main skills that I think we see really, really clearly in the, especially in the first chapter of Dave Pelzer's memoir. And again, skill number one was using concrete detail or sensory detail. And then skill number two was letting the reader inside your own head. All right, so I just wanted to touch base about those couple of things. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is our own memoirs. If you go into Canvas, and all this is under um, the folder for next week, and is also under the modules in general. So if you go into Canvas, you will notice that you have an essay topic in there. I'll talk about this quite a bit in class. Your topic is to choose a moment in your life, it can really be whatever you want it to be, and write a memoir about it. Now, if you take a look at the actual assignment, you will see the question is on there. The deadlines for the first rough draft, second rough draft, and final draft are on there. I also have a couple of tips for you. The other thing that I have directly on the assignment is the list of grading criteria. In these memoirs, we are focusing on three main things. And because of how I just talked about Dave Pelzer's memoir, these should not be surprises. The first thing we are practicing is using concrete detail. Right? Anything that lets the reader feel like they are there with you. That's the first skill. The second skill is going to be letting a person inside your head. Again, Dave Pelzer does this incredibly, incredibly well. Use him as a model. Even if you are writing about something that doesn't seem as emotional. So if you are writing about, for example, um, waking up for school this morning. You can still let your, let your reader inside your head in the same way Pelzer does, even if your topic is very, very different. 
So your subject may be um, very different from his, but the skill, the style can actually be pretty similar, and that's fine. Now the third skill, and we're going to talk about this a lot in class, especially during weeks three and week four, is to have a big picture idea. All I mean by this is that by the time your reader gets to the end of the memoir, they should be able to see um, or to understand why you chose that specific moment over any other moment. So for example, you can write about what you took away from the experience or why or how that experience shaped you or affected you in some way. So for Monday's class, I want you to make sure that you, first of all, read until page 20 of Dave Pelzer's memoir. That's only about another five pages, so it shouldn't take you too long. Then secondly, make sure you read through the essay topic. And the third thing I want you to do, which you're already doing, is watching this video right now. If you've gotten to this point, you've already checked this uh, part of the assignment off. And then the third thing is to, sorry, the fourth thing is to go in and take the quiz for this Monday. This is very, very quick. A couple of questions and then you're done. All right, so I hope this lecture was helpful. I know it took about 11 minutes or so, but I hope it was helpful for us to touch base and feel free if anything comes up to reach out to me, send me an email, send me a message through Canvas. I will still be around and I'll be responding to messages as quickly as I possibly can. All right, so I'll see you in class on Monday and good luck with everything.